Hello everybody, Mr. Johnston here, and today we are going to be talking about classification of matter, elements, compounds, and mixtures. And for those of you who are following along in your textbook, this is section 1.3 out of our textbook, section 1.3. Uh, to start with, let's uh, give a quick definition of matter. Matter is anything that occupies space and has mass. So if we look around us, all of this stuff around us is matter. And so uh, here's a quick joke for you. Why is the chemist so de depressed all the time? Because when you ask him what's the matter, everything is the matter. <laughs> um, moving on. Matter pink can be classified according to its physical state, and that means whether it's a solid, liquid, or gas, as well as its composition. Um, and the physical state is really just a result of the arrangement and the movement of the particles. So if we took a look, the molecular look at a solid liquid in a gas, we see that the arrangement of the particles is different. In a solid, those particles are um, really close together and very orderly, whereas in a liquid, those particles, they can move past each other. They can slide around as they jostle from place to place, uh, but they're still packed pretty close together. In a gas, those particles are really moving, and they have a lot of velocity, a lot of kinetic energy, and they are moving very fast and very spread apart. Um, so again, in a solid, liquid, and gas, really the only difference is the arrangement and the movement of the particles. When we start to talk about composition of the matter, uh, well, composition is really determined by the particles that make up the sample. And so here we can talk about uh, if something is pure versus a mixture, uh, and we can talk about whether that substance is either um, an element or a compound, and it really breaks down to the particle level. So what are the individual particles that are composing that substance or that mixture? Um, and we'll get into a little bit more of this in just a second now. So first I want to spend a little time talking about pure substances. So a pure substance, and here we mean compounds and elements, have fixed composition. Every particle in the substance is the same. Um, the components of a pure substance can be individual atoms, or they can be different atoms joined together, uh, and that would be a compound. So one thing to note is that in a pure substance, the elements present and the ratio of those elements atoms is the same for every sample of the substance. So uh, a couple of quick examples for you. Um, if we were to consider sodium chloride, every particle on a sample of sodium chloride has a one-to-one -one ratio of sodium atoms to chlorine atoms. Um, and when we look at a pile of sodium chloride, we see that it's sodium atom, chlorine atoms joined together as a solid, uh, but that ratio is one to one. If we were to look at uh, a sample of water, well, water is H2O. Every particle in a sample of water has a two to one ratio of hydrogen atoms to oxygen atoms. So that's a fixed ratio every molecule, every particle in water is that two to one ratio. Uh, one more quick example, helium. So helium is a gas and every uh, atom or every particle in a sample of helium is simply an atom of helium. Um, one more, uh, another note about pure substances is that some elements form bonds with atoms of the same element to become what we refer to as diatomic molecules. And so a diatomic molecule is when there are two atoms of the same element joined together by a bond. Um, it's still an element, however, we refer to it as a diatomic element. And it turns out that there are seven diatomic elements. They are 
hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. And I would recommend that you take some time to memorize what these seven diatomic elements are. Uh, remember that list. And I do have a couple of little mnemonic devices to help you memorize the list. Uh, my first mnemonic device for you is you can remember the name of my favorite fictional chemist, F. Han Brickell. Uh, again, this is not a real chemist, but uh, it does help you remember F for fluorine, Han, H-O-N, that's hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and then Brickell, Br, bromine, I, iodine, Cl for chlorine. So remember the name F. Han Brickell, and you'll remember the seven diatomics. There's another mnemonic that I like, and that one I refer to as the rule of seven. Now, the rule of seven, we got to look to a periodic table. So here is a periodic table. Uh, and if I look at this periodic table to remember the rule of seven, here it is, find element seven, and then draw what looks like a seven on your periodic table. So do you see how that looks like a seven? And there's some of your diatomics right there, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. And then to get the seventh element, we have to grab hydrogen. Uh, so remember the rule of seven. Find element seven, make a seven, don't forget hydrogen. And those are your diatomic elements. Um, moving on to classification of matter, thinking about mixtures. So a mixture contains more than one pure substance, which means there's more than one type of particle. And mixtures have variable composition depending on the pure substances they contain and their relative amounts. Um, solutions are an example of a mixture. And if you've ever uh, drank Kool-Aid, you drank a solution. And you know that not every single mixture or not every single um, person makes Kool-Aid exactly the same. Uh, I remember being a kid and going over to my aunt's house, and she put so much sugar in the Kool-Aid, I loved it, uh, but my mom would make Kool-Aid, and she was maybe a little stingy and didn't put quite as much sugar in there, and it was not the same. Uh, they're both making a mixture, a solution. However, the composition and the uh, relative amounts of those parts of the mixture are not always the same. Um, I also wanted to mention that mixtures can be further categorized depending on how uniform the substances are mixed. So there's really two uh, types of mixtures, either a, oop, there it goes, the light's back on, uh, either a heterogeneous mixture, which has composition that vary from one region to another, or a homogeneous mixture. A homogeneous mixture has uniform composition throughout the mixture because the atoms or molecules that compose them are evenly mixed. And so here's my diagram example. Um, a homogeneous mixture. So the particles that make up that homogeneous mixture pretty much mixed evenly all the way through. Whereas a heterogeneous mixture, there's one part of the mixture where there's a lot of one thing and another part of the mixture where there's a lot of other things. Uh, and so the mixture is not uniform all the way through. Um, so homogeneous versus heterogeneous, different types of mixtures. Um, next slide. I wanted to take a minute and uh, think about um, pure substances versus mixtures. So I have uh, some diagrams here, and we should be able to classify each of these uh, by looking at the particle diagram. So let's look at A first. When I look at A, I see uh, atoms of X 
and then I see two atoms of element Z. And so when I classify this, I would look at this and say, well, that is a mixture of two elements, X and Z2. Uh, and so the Z2 is actually a diatomic element, or an example of one here. Um, if I look at B, B, here I see um, each particle in this mixture is the same. So I see always two atoms of Z, one atom of X. So each one of these is the same. And so this is an example of a pure substance, and it is a compound, and that compound would be XZ2. If we look at C, so C uh, here, I see all of the atoms are the same. So there's only element Z. However, uh, they're joined together, which means that it's a diatomic element. So C is a pure substance, and it's an element. We would call it Z2. Now, D is... Um, looks like there is some of these uh, compounds, XZ2, and there's also atoms of uh, element X. So this one would have to be classified as uh, a mixture of an element and a compound. So we would call it a mixture of X and XZ2. Uh, that's all I have for classifying elements, compounds, and mixtures. Uh, thank you for listening, and have a great rest of your day.